the close of the 16th century uh, England. So, who are these people? University books, they are seven in number, starting from Thomas Kidd, John Lilly, George Bailey, Robert Green, Thomas Nashing, Christopher Monroe. So they are all uh, 16th uh, century dramatists of England. So the term we must understand, university books. Actually, this is a term coined by George Sainsbury. He is a 19th century journalist and author. So actually, when they were all alive, they were not called university books. Only in the 19th century, George Sainsbury gave this term, coined this term to the seven dramatists of the time of 16th century. So who are they? They were all uh, educated either at Oxford or Cambridge University. Naturally, they are called uh, wits. Why? Because wit is nothing but scholars. So they were all scholars at the Oxford or the Cambridge University. And they all had a very strong career. Uh, many of them were actors as well as dramatists. So initially drama was written for performance. So naturally they must know how to act also. Uh, a dramatist cannot just stop by writing the script. They, he must know how to enact also. And uh, they know very well uh, what are the requirements of the stage. And they know the pulse of the audience also. Because uh, they were all scholars. They know how, what will be expected by the audience. And uh, they were all contemporaries. So they had a chance of collaboration with each other. So that is also interesting. So they were able to collaborate with each other. That has given a lot of uh, improvement in drama. Okay, how drama came to uh, English literature? So once again, we have to go back to the Roman influence from Seneca, the great dramatist of Rome. And his period is 4th uh, BC to AD 65. And uh, he was uh, introduced in the curriculum of Cambridge University. And Seneca was very famous uh, writer prescribed for the Cambridge University students between the uh, years 1550 and uh, 1560. Uh, those 10 years are very, very important uh, that uh, the curriculum of the university Seneca was prescribed. And 10 of his uh, 10 tragedies of Seneca uh, were translated into English. And the book called Seneca, His 10 Tragedies was published in the year 1581. And this is the first uh, printed collection of Seneca's plays in English. So that was uh, very, very, very important uh, in developing English drama. And all these people, Marlowe, Pele, and Green, these three universities, which they had the chance of studying Seneca and his tragedies. And uh, Seneca has introduced uh, heroic themes with the splendid descriptions, elaborate speeches, violent incidents and emotions. So these are all the features of Seneca, Seneca and tragedy. And he had used a blank verse. The blank verse is marked by strong and sonorous lines, grand epithets, powerful declamation. So these are all. Blank verse actually helped him to match his theme. So what is the theme he wanted to present? Uh, and blank verse has uh, given him scope. That's why he had used it. And uh, blank verse also came into English drama through Seneca. And George Pele, the first of the university, which this period is 1558 to 1598, belonged to the theater called Lord Admiral's Company. Uh, so I told you many of them are actors as well as uh, dramatists. So he belonged to that uh, theater called Lord Admiral's Company. And he had written uh, 
the place called the arrangement of paris it is actually a romantic comedy it is a tribute to the queen the second one is david and bathsheba written in 1599 third one is edward the first 1593 and it is called an incoherent chronicle play it is not a successful one uh, the old wives tale uh, it is actually a clever satire on uh, popular drama of the day uh, there is the next play which is called uh, uh nyalia play which is now last it is not at all uh, known now uh, the hunting of cupid so many of us uh, do not know and uh, he this play is not much uh, known uh, and he has written a poem also in blank verse and the title of the poem is folly himnia which was published in 1590 so that is george king and uh, then the next one the second of the southern university it's this robert green and uh, this period is 1558 to 1592 he has written four plays and he had uh, written 35 prose pieces uh, he had uh, been better known as a prose writer what are the plays he has written alphonsus king of aragon uh, it was uh, published in 1589 actually he had uh, modeled this play on marlowe's uh, tamerlane and uh, the second one is friar bacon and uh, friar bangai uh, i told you know, they all had uh, collaborations and they were contemporaries that's why he had uh, uh, modeled his play on marlowe's tamerlane and friar bacon and friar bangai it is actually a play about uh, the tale of the love of a maid with two men Uh, two friars friar bacon and friar bangai and it is actually called this this play can be called a document of elizabethan life as such so that is being uh, represented and uh, the third one is orland of periods uh, this is this has the source uh, from an english translation of ariosto so once again uh, borrowed from the renaissance literature uh, the fourth one is the scottish history of james the fourth this is uh, published in 1592 uh, it talks about the some imaginary incident in the king's life so see you, uh, you could see uh, they have borrowed the themes uh, from the life as such from the court from the social life Uh, robert green had written uh, four plays and 35 prose pieces and in his prose writings his style is very very beautiful and the wit is delicious in nature and he has a powerful imagination and uh, he is very quick in his uh, language the wit is very very delicious and quick so maybe he can be called a uh, 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 someone who had uh, uh, helped in the development of english prose the third one is thomas kidd 1588 to 1594 he is a dramatist and later uh, his work the famous one the spanish tragedy uh, many of the universities are still prescribe uh, this work is translated into german and dutch so very popular play uh, the plot is very horrific and uh, there are the plot is actually stuffed with murder sudden death etc very very horrific uh, theme so many of us have learned it uh, when we were our students and uh, karnimia is the next play written by thomas kidd uh, it was in 1593 we have soliman and persida 1588 first part of geronimo in 1592 that's all about the kid and now we have christopher morlo uh, 1564 to 1593 um, so dr fastest nobody can forget very wonderful character uh, he had uh, talked about uh, the 
actually the renaissance uh, um, feature of aiming for something which is impossible so this play was written in 1592 and it had a good beginning and an ending <coughs> if we go in chronological order his uh, first work will be edward the second so that is supposed to be his best best work uh, so he borrowed uh, from colin shed's chronicles history so it is a well structured uh, plot because he had uh, borrowed from history next one is chamberlain the great uh, 1587 and uh, plot is they say episodic in nature so it is not a well structured one and uh, it is also said that there is lack of cohesion in this play so that is not uh, much acclaimed the third one is the jew of malta in 1589 uh, it is uh, it has a character who is a villain nakia villain 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 there will be one more uh, villain also so the villainous characters are being uh, highlighted so that is also feature of uh, renaissance uh like uh, satan is also introduced in dr fastus so we have uh, the villains being introduced the tragedy of dido queen of carthage 1593 uh, this play uh, is written in collaboration with thomas nash so they were contemporaries uh, thomas nash is also a uh, university wit so they have uh, together they have written this play next one is uh, the massacre or at paris it was in 1593 but he left it unfinished because in 1593 he died so this play is an unfinished one so we all know dr uh, i mean christopher marlowe and uh, what are the renaissance uh, qualities he had adopted so one is uh, the renaissance quest for power this is uh, combined with the quest for beauty so in tamburlaine we see the shepherd questing uh, uh, for sweet fruition of an earthly crown and in jew of malta we malta we have bar barabas uh, aiming for infinite riches in a little room and we have dr fastus who is aiming for infinite knowledge so this kind of a quest is renaissance quest which is being uh, uh, used as a theme by christopher marlow the first uh, actually uh, christopher marlow is called the first experimenter with black was uh, with a lot of uh, burning energy with the choice of diction with the sensuousness uh, richness sensuous richness and the variety of phase and uh, responsiveness demands of varying emotions so blank verse has given uh, room for all these kind of uh, emotions burning energy the uh, sensuous richness variety of phase and responsiveness uh, to the demands of varying emotions so blank verse has come very handy so this is a renaissance spirit uh, which marlow has adopted uh next to dr i mean christopher marlow is thomas nash 1567 to 1601 uh, and he has finished uh, marlow's uh, work so they are contemporaries uh, they collaborated with each other we have uh, thomas nash finishing marlow's the tragedy of dido uh, that's why it is uh, called a collaborative work and he had written a satirical mask so we are going to learn about mask and he has written one satirical mask which is called the summer's last will and testament we'll be understanding what is a mask in uh, the last uh, part of the lecture and he has written a tale which is called the unfortunate traveler otherwise uh, there is another title also life of jake wilton it is actually written in prose style so slowly prose is also being adopted by university wits then comes thomas large his period is 1558 to 1625 uh, actually he studied law in the university uh, 
so how come a person who studied law switched over to playwriting uh, he was interested in uh, watching plays and later on he was interested in writing plays also so he wrote the wounds of civil war that is the first uh, chronicle play he has written and it is also assumed we are not sure it is assumed that he collaborated with shakespeare in uh, writing henry the 6th see critics may not uh, uh, approve of it but uh, one uh, group of critics they say that uh, this man had collaborated with shakespeare also in writing henry the 6th and he had written prose romances like rosalind euphues golden legacy uh, that was in 1590 and uh, they say uh, this prose romance has given the uh, uh, basis for shakespeare's play as you like it this is the chief source of uh, shakespeare's as you like it so he has influenced shakespeare also so romantic uh, writing so uh, introduced by thomas nash so romanticism is also a renaissance uh, spirit then comes john lely 1554 to 1606 he is uh, known as a writer of than a dramatist proper so i told you many of the universities university which they started the concentrating on prose and he is one he is better known as a writer of prose uh, this one the play uh, alexander and campus uh, campus this is a play written for performance uh, during uh, yeah, new year's eve in 1581 so that is the first play he has uh, tried and then comes the second play 1584 it is sappho and pavo endymion many of you would have come to uh, would have studied this endymion was written in 1591 actually this was written around the friendship between the queen and the earl of peachester so people uh, are very much interested in knowing about this relationship and he had uh, wonderfully brought out the relation between queen and the earl of peachester and the uh, next one is uh, the woman in the moon and allows metamorphosis uh, he actually had a uh, promoted masks so he has more kinship with masks than with drama such so masks uh, will be having delightful songs um, there will be dance also in mask but uh, he had introduced dialogues which are uh, admirable clear cut phrases allusive dialogues he has used so he is interested in masks masks will be a performance using covering the face of the mask and there will be songs sung by the performers there will be dance performance uh, there will be setting also we will be learning that in detail later and he had uh, he is known for his prose work euphues uh, so this man john billy had a contribution of his own uh, which we cannot deny so uh, all the seven university sign up was Thank you.